my great grandfather, James Brown, was a had a car dealership in San Francisco, and after the earthquake of 1906, uh, the business pretty much failed for him, and so he was looking for something else to do. He had purchased a piece of property in Capitola um, sometime prior and uh, moved to Capitola. Noticed that a lot of neighbors were doing some farming and uh, he started experimenting with a few flower bulbs. He noticed some of the other other growers in the area were growing and was quite successful with a few varieties. Particularly begonias did quite well and he ended up going to Europe and picked up multiple types of seed and bulbs and experimented with those as well and callas were another were another crop that he started to grow as well. James died at the age of 49. Both his sons, Alan and Worth Brown, then took over the business. Worth was doing most of the sales and Alan was doing most uh, of the horticultural end of it. Old business increased in production. They bought more land in the marina area uh, for the increased begonia and eventually the callas. I got a degree in, in uh, horticulture from Cal Poly, and um, after that, I did an internship in a uh, bulb company in South Africa, uh, Hadeco Bulb, and worked there for six months <clears throat> in 1984. And uh, did some traveling after that, and came back and went to work, and been here ever since. Growing up in the business, you know, a lot of times. You're doing jobs that aren't the most interesting or the most fun, and uh, a lot of times you're not that interested. And I wasn't that interested till till I uh, went to college and got into the horticulture program, and then I found other students that were either going to family businesses or some that weren't, and and they uh, they thought it was you know it was great that we actually had a family business, and so. Uh, I think I think at that time I got more encouragement to to do it. When I got into the business, um, you know, my cousins were just getting into it too, uh, and it was pretty much we were a begonia bulb growing company, and they they grew uh, they farmed on about seventy five acres in Marina, uh, California, and uh, I think they did about a million dollars in sales is what. I recall there was also a wholesale business at that time. I think the wholesale business had just been discontinued in, in the early 80s, and so we just had the production business. But it was much smaller. It was focused on begonias, and, um, you know, it's changed a lot in the last 30 years. Begonia business was very flat, and there wasn't much growth in that, and actually the business shrank, and, and we needed to develop other crops. So the main crop we developed was a calla lily crop, got a breeding program put together, took the original genetic material they had in and uh, developed new varieties 
and brought them on the market. And the market was interested in cow lilies at that time in the 80s and 90s. And we grew pretty rapidly, adding adding acreage and production and sales every year till we were by 2005 we were farming over a thousand acres and uh, producing 25 million bulbs and, and over 25 million dollars in business so it, it changed a lot from a smaller begonia focused business to to uh, a larger business on international sales as well it changed quite a bit in scope and size and, and just uh, what type of crops we were focusing on. I was hired as a cattle breeder, even though we were selling more or less uh, begonias. But the cattle program developed as a plant breeder and as a plant pathologist with this particularly uh, sensitive crop. We were able to create all these new varieties that you see out here and uh, be quite successful in developing this crop to the world. It was always known as the big white funeral flower or the winter calla. But now the colored calla, the miniature calla has become a staple in many people's lives and certainly a staple for this company. This particular crop, the way we have developed this crop is to grow from true seed or have lines come true. And this takes many generations of developing inbreds as many as 10 to 15 years to develop a line which is stable enough to protect and patent and move out to the field. The old funeral flower has now developed into one of the most precious and beautiful and outstanding horticultural crops, both in a pot and as a cut flower. Internationally, um, we sell to all of the major markets in the world, um, prim the primary business being in Europe, and uh, of course they're, they're leaders in, in bulk production over there, so the fact that we're selling a product into the Netherlands um, by the ton on a weekly basis is always quite surprising especially the Dutch, um, but that tells you how good the quality of our product is uh, that we sell. So yeah, Europe being number one, and then uh, the other, other markets, of course, would be Canada and uh, Japan, China, uh, recently Australia, and um, a few other miscellaneous countries. More, more now into South America. Uh, some large cut flower operations in South America are, are buying our product now than um, than they did before. But our our main main market is here in in the U.S. We bring in about ten or twelve loads of bulbs a day in our peak season in a busy season, and we'd fill up this warehouse here completely full, and then we'd fill up another warehouse. We were at several different warehouses all over Watsonville, and uh, they, all the bulbs wouldn't fit here, so we'd have to rent an off-site warehouse, and, and then we'd fill that up also. And so there was a lot of trucking of the bulbs back and forth from those, from those other warehouses.
I started in a different position. I've been a tractor driver for a few years, supervisor almost nine years, and keep learning uh, from my other supervisors and managers. I learned from Justin and eventually I get opportunity. One of my farm managers decide to leave. Uh, they give me the opportunity to be a uh, farm manager and I accept it. And I basically go from there and try to do it the best every day. And now I complete almost about eight years. have a, all the time multiple location up to 18 20 different ranches Santa Cruz County Monterrey County and different locations like uh, San Juan Bautista Gonzalez Soledad uh, Marina and even um, we grow a crop on Santa Maria California the cala crop is is a two-year crop to produce from seed it's direct seeded in the field it actually takes two and a half years because you have to collect the seed the year prior in, uh, in parent stock ranches, separate ranches where we, we just produce seed. You sow the seed directly in the field, fields are fumigated prior to it, you have to, they're a very slow germinating crop, it takes a couple months just to raise the seedlings and then at the end of the first year you have small uh, seedling plants in the field and they go into dormancy and then you you have the, the second year they, they uh, grow to a flowering stage, flower in, in the months of May and June. And uh, then the tubers start to size up uh, as you approach September and the harvest starts early, mid-September and goes through first part of December. And uh, the bulbs are brought in, processed at uh, the facility, sorted and graded and uh, inventoried and, and then start, you know, start shipping out by, by mid-October. Two year process from, from collecting seed to, to getting the, the, the product out the door. And uh, uh, begonias are only a one year process and, and they're a much simpler crop, although they have to be started in a greenhouse and they have to be transplanted, so they're a bit different.
starting off begonias uh, to collect seed, which is the mother block, and uh, also with the uh, color mother block, uh, we produce seed and we sow the seed, and this is part of the product from the seed that we harvest. Uh, and uh, that's we have uh, Cala Ethiopicas, we have uh, Amarillis, Caladona, we have uh, Yukomas. Uh, and uh, all those that's part of my job, control the greenhouses, uh, all the environment, watering, feeding, drenching, uh, and take care of all the plants. Begonias, that's uh, one of the most interesting plants because uh, they produce a lot of flowers uh, for five months at least. Uh, beautiful, they're all different sizes of begonias. We have upright hanging basket, scent and begonias. And uh, we start, you know, with the mother block, we pot them up and we grow them in the greenhouses. Uh, and we make the process to collect seed, and uh, that is uh, to produce this uh, baby begonias. We send it to the field, they grow for six, seven months in the field and then we harvest the bulbs uh, in the field and bring it back to hilltop. Uh, and then we regrade, we grade the bulbs uh, by varieties and then uh, from there they pack them and send to their customers.
last 30 years, we've, we've had uh, significant earthquakes in 89, uh, which fortunately did not cause too much damage. Um, it did cause inconvenience with, with roads being closed and, and, and fuel shortages and things. Fortunately, when the earthquake hit, none of the, none of the pallets came down. They all stayed stacked up. Um, the lights were swinging. It looked like a haunted house, and, uh, and uh, there was nobody around. I was the only one here, uh, so it was kind of scary. And then um, I started to drive home, and the bridge that goes over the Watsonville Slough had broke complete, was down, so the road, the highway was closed, and uh, had to go back and get, get off the freeway and take the, another route to get home. But yeah, that was a, a scary deal there. In 90, 91, that winter, we had uh, one of the worst freezes we've, we've had around here, uh, worst in my lifetime, but it was uh, uh, two successive cold fronts came down in a row. So it lasted 13 days and the temperatures got down around 17, 18 degrees at night. And uh, we basically froze out 75, 80% of the begonia crop. Um, so that was pretty bad. We were, we were around the clock running the sprinklers out in the field. Um, there's three of us. There would be the farm manager, John Hutchins, myself, and the, the assistant farm manager, Dave Lansford, and we just rotate. I had the, the uh, evening to midnight shift and, and just watch the, the sprinklers, make sure everything was running fine, the pump was running okay, and uh, build yourself a fire and <laughs> try not to... To freeze, so that that was pretty bad. And then we had the uh, the '95 flood, so-called March miracle, where both the Pajaro River and Salinas Rivers flooded, and we had a, a, a farm. One of our farms was on the Pajaro River, and it flooded pretty bad. Had the water in there for a day and a half, probably closer to two days. And then uh, and we were trying to sandbag the, the levee and all the water seeping through the gopher holes, and it was. Uh, it was, a, it was a losing battle. Eventually the levee breached further up and, and, uh, and yeah, flooded. But funny enough, the bulbs came out okay out of that field for some, you know, they didn't, you know, it wasn't underwater long enough to, to hurt them, so, so that worked out. Certainly we've had blights due to bacterial diseases. The Irwinia is a terrible disease. We've had a number of years where we've lost a good portions of the crop to that, and then we've had uh, Diseases with viral diseases had bad tomato spotted wilt uh, outbreaks that were infested the crop that cost us a lot of money. So a lot of interesting challenges. And even in, in Mexico and in Baja, just three years ago, we had a Category 3 hurricane hit us head on. And uh, um, fortunately, we only had one, one or you know, two plantings in the ground. And, uh, but it just tore up all the steel buildings. It tore up the whole town. It, it, was, a, it was a mess. So. Um, yeah, we, we've faced some interesting challenges when it comes to that sort of thing. After 2008, things were a little bumpy, both from crop production issues and, and uh, economic issues at that time. Uh, we started to, to lose money uh, more frequently. We started to get more competition. Uh, all our competition basically is offshore foreign competition uh, out of the Netherlands primarily, but a fair amount out of uh, South America and Central America, certainly with the flowers. And uh, they were being very competitive and our costs were, were rising rapidly. And um, our breeding program was introducing new varieties, but probably not as, as many high quality varieties as we needed to to keep up with the competition basically nail in our coffin after losing money successive years was um, the, the, the regulations and the, and the, and the increased uh, cost of labor in the state of California, basically uh, minimum wage going up to $15 an hour, a lot of regulatory costs being kicked in. So on top of the fact that we already were struggling to, to get competitive again with, with the competition, get more efficient, uh, get better varieties in the market, do a better job selling and marketing. Now we're, we're faced with rapidly rising costs, which we're going to, uh, we were not going to be able to pass those costs along. So 
that kind of sealed the decision and we decided at that point that uh, we better uh, close the business on our terms before uh, we were forced to, to do it. A lot of flower companies is closing down um, again through other circumstances also. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's difficult to stay in the market in an economic situation like this. People rather grow vegetables or lettuce, uh, food. <laughs> the workers really have been the ones that kind of have motivated me over the years and, and inspired me because I see, you know, how, how hard they'll work to do a job right. And uh, I always think, you know, if they're, they're willing to do that, you know, that, that inspires me to get up, you know, early in the morning and, and do my job. The main thing, you know, I live here. The company gave me a home to live here. Uh, and uh, my kids, they grow up here in the ranch. And uh, we're gonna have to go and uh, live now in the city, which uh, is gonna be totally different. Uh, and all my workers, you know, they're really good workers. So I'm probably gonna miss everything. So in a way, I'm not really sure where I'm gonna go. I hardly know how to do other things than this, because I've been working here for for 26 years, so sure, I'm gonna miss this. A lot of the people working in here, tractor drivers, sprayers, supervisors, has been working for the company many years, some up to 40 years, 30 years. Uh, it's really like a family. There's, there's a part of me that obviously is gonna miss, miss the business and, and the people that, that I worked with for, for you know, like 30 years, but you know, we were in the business for over a hundred years. It's, it's something we can be proud of. All of the crops that we developed, we developed ourselves. Very little outside help. Um, those crops are now being sold to other companies uh, as breeding lines, and uh, they'll they'll continue on. Um, you know, who knows for, for how long? So they, they, it's all something we can be really proud of, and. Um, you know, it's a new, it's a new chapter in many of our lives. I've spent my last 30 some odd years uh, working at this and than uh, something that I'd hope to be able to to uh, pass on to the next generation like previous generations had. So yeah, it was uh, not easy, but uh, rapid closure would have been very uh, inconvenient for everybody. So um, yeah, it was tough. It was a tough decision. You no, know, it's been inspirational and, and a good life experience to, to be in this type of work and I've enjoyed it. It's been an honor to be a part of this family and a part of this business. We were growing something that, that really put smiles on people's faces. That was really what this business and a lot of what this business was about was beautifying the world putting smiles on people's faces.